How you doing everyone? Greetings and welcome back to the basement. So what I'd like to do today is continue on with my kind of study of Batari Basic and progress a little bit. In the last episode what we did was we managed to draw a sprite, to put it on screen, to change the colour of the background and the sprite, to animate that sprite and also to make him move across the screen. And what we've got is we've kind of got the very beginnings of an Atari 2600 game that will feature this little character here, Bob the Betentacled Hedge Octopus. So what I'd like to do today is kind of take it from a demo, which is more or less what it is right now, and add some joystick controls so that we can actually move Bob around a little bit and make it more like a game. But before I get into all that, what I'd like to do is have a little bit of a deeper look at how Batari Basic deals with X and Y coordinates on screen and how a sprite kind of fits into all that. Okay, so let me use my little paper cutout here to try and explain this as best as I possibly can to you. This here is your TV screen. In Batari Basic, we can position pixels and sprites and stuff on screen using coordinates on the X and Y axes. So the X axis is running across the horizontal and you have locations on it from 1 to 159. The y-axis is slightly different. It's running on the, on the vertical and it goes from 1 to 89 that's visible to us and continues on from 90 to 255 that we can't see. And that's the reason why in the end of the last episode we had Bob running down the screen. And when he went off the bottom he took a long time before he came back onto the top again because we could see him between 1 and 89 but then between 90 and 255 he was invisible to us. Anyway, all that just to say, if you position a pixel, a single solitary pixel at location 1, 1, it'll appear on the top of the screen here. If you increase the value of the x-axis, that pixel will move across to the right. If you decrease the value of the x-axis, it will move to the left. If you increase the value of the y-axis, it'll move down the screen. And if you decrease the value of the y-axis, it'll move back up the screen. Now, the one thing you need to keep in mind, because we're moving around the sprite here, is that it is the pixel that makes up the bottom left hand side of that sprite is the one that we're positioning. So the thing to keep in mind is we can position it anywhere we want on screen. However, if you position this guy here at position 1-1 one, one, for example, what's going to happen is you're only going to see the very bottom of it because the rest of it will be after going into an area screen that we can't actually see. So that's worth keeping in mind for what we're going to be dealing with next. Okay, so to show you how we can move a sprite on screen using these joystick commands, what I've done is I've written this simple enough little program. So there's nothing really new in here that we haven't covered before. But just to recap a little bit, what we have is we have our main loop. And our main loop is ran through constantly while we're running the program. And inside of it, what we've done is we've set the background color, we've set our sprite color, we're drawing our sprite here as well using this matrix of ones and zeros. So we've got Bob with his tentacles here. And what we're doing as well is we're going to set the sprite's position on the X and Y axis. So we have our player zero X position and our player zero Y position. So what I've done is I've assigned those values to the variables X and Y. And up here outside in the main loop, I've declared these variables X and Y. And what I've done is I've put the value of 50 into each of them. So what that'll do is when the program starts, Bob's position on screen will be at position 50-50 on the X and Y axis. So that's pretty much what we covered in the last episode. Now, these are new commands that we haven't seen before. We've got our Joy Zero right, Joy Zero left, Joy Zero up, and Joy Zero down. And they do exactly what you would think they'll do. They kind of tell the Atari what to do if we push the joystick in a direction. So these commands, are slipped into if then statements. So they're easy enough to use that way. And I'll give you the example here with the joy zero right. So what's happening is if joy zero right, then x equals x plus one. So what's happening is if we move the joystick to the right, the value of x, which is 50 up here, will be increased by one. And you'll remember that the higher the value of the position on the x-axis for a sprite, the further towards the right it'll go. The lower the value, the further towards the left it'll go. So if we move the joystick to the right, the x position is increased. If we move it to the left, then x equals x minus 1. So that value is decreased. So that's how we get our left and right movement on screen. And the exact same thing is happening 
if we push the joystick up or down, only it's happening on the y-axis to control our up and down movement. And what that gives us when we compile and run the code is Bob on screen at position 50-50, and we can move him using the joystick to the right, to the left, up and down. And equally, we can move him on the diagonals as well. There we go. So that is how we can easily insert joystick commands into Batari basic code. So as I was playing around with Bob on screen like this, it kind of quickly occurred to me that actually when Bob moves to the right, he doesn't face to the right, which is kind of problematic. But then I discovered that Batari basic actually has this integrated into it. We've got a little command called ref p0. And when it equals eight, it's turned on. Now ref p0 stands for reflect the player zero sprite. So what it means is that it'll actually give us a mirror image of the player zero sprite when it's set to eight. So what I've done is I've integrated it into the joystick being moved to the right command. So we've got if joy zero right, then x equals x plus one, which will make our sprite move to the right across the screen, but also it'll set the ref p zero to eight. And what that does, is that it brings Bob to life a little bit more because he still moves in the same way in these directions but when we go to the right now he turns and he faces right once we stop moving right he turns back again but still it gives Bob that little bit of extra life kind of brings the game to life maybe a little bit so there was one other problem that I kind of came across and that's when I tried to go off screen in these directions he kind of flickers across the screen a bit so I wanted to try and resolve that in some way. And there was the other problem that we saw before, whereas when he goes off screen on the bottom, he'll come back on top, but he'll take a long time to get there. So we have two options really when it comes to that. We can lock Bob into the screen so that he can go over to the limit of the right, left, up or down, but no further. Or we can have it so that when he goes off one side of the screen, he comes straight back on on the other side, both horizontally and vertically. And the code to do both of those is coming up right now. Okay, so let's have a little look at letting Bob loop around the screen. Now, remember what we were talking about earlier about the bottom left-hand pixel defining where the sprite is on screen because this comes into play here. Basically, we've got the same code as we had before, but we're after setting a few conditions for the X and Y axis here on the bottom. So what I've got is if X is less than one, then X equals 159. Now remember that the available positions on the X axis across the screen are from one to 159. So what's going to happen here is that if we try to go off the screen to the left, we'll try to make X less than one. Then what's going to happen is it's going to put the sprite back over here at position 159. So we're going to get a smooth scroll going across the screen like that. The next line is setting up the opposite thing. If X is greater than 159, so if we're over here and we try to go further in that direction, then X is going to equal one. It's going to come back on the screen this side. Now we've got the same thing going for the Y axis as well, but remember that the only visible area on the Y axis is between positions one and 89. Then we've got like between 90 and 255, that's an invisible region off screen. So we need to keep that in mind when we're positioning our sprite on screen using this technique more or less. So what we've got is we've got if Y is less than one, then y equals 111 because what we want to happen as the bob sprite is 20 pixels high we want it so that when the bottom left pixel reaches position zero here gets to position one and goes to zero what will happen is it'll come on screen but a little lower so that the top of the sprite will appear on the bottom so that's why we're after setting it to 111 and not to 89 and then we've got the opposite thing happening again whereas if y equal if y is greater than 111, then y equals one. And what that gives us when we com compile and run that code is a bob that will smoothly loop around the screen on both the y and the x axes without any of the flickering that we were seeing before.
Now, so the next one we look at is confining Bob to his kind of play area so that he's stuck on the screen. And again, we're playing with conditions on the X and Y axes. So here, what we've got is if X is less than one, then X equals one. So he'll go over to this side of the screen and he'll be stuck there. If X is greater than 153, then X equals 153. Now, the X axis does go up to 159, but you need to take into consideration the actual width of the sprite because it's the bottom left pixel on the sprite that determines where it is on screen. So if you want them to butt right up to the edge, you need to take 159 less the width of your sprite. And then again, for the Y axis, we're doing the same thing. We've got if Y is less than 21, then Y equals 21. So we've got a sprite here that's 20 high, but I've got it in such a way that when it goes up to here, we still see the top of Bob's head because he's locked here at 21. And on the bottom, if y is less than 89, then y equals 89. So the bottom left pixel will go down to 89 on the y axis and will go no further. So we end up with Bob locked into his screen. And what that gives us when we run it is Bob and he confined into his screen in this banner. So you can't go beyond the left and right and the up and down limitations. So that's kind of ways that we can play around with values and ways that we can define things so that we can make games work the way we want them to work. So we could equally uh, have a game in such a way that if Bob is at a certain position on the X or Y axis, different things can happen. So that's basically how we can set up conditions in games. Now, so we're after covering quite a bit in this episode and in the last episode as well, but I thought what would be nice is in order to show you a little bit of collision detection, to put most of what we've learned already together to make something that looks more like a game than anything we've done up until now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two sprites on screen. Now, there's nothing new here because if you can put one sprite on screen, you pretty much have all the code you need to put two on screen. You remember, to put a sprite on screen, we've been drawn it with player zero, we've been coloring it, with call you P0 and we've been positioning it on screen with player 0x and player 0y. All you need to do is change the 0 on those commands to a 1 and you have everything you need in order to draw, color and position your player 1 sprite. So that's how we're going to be putting two sprites on screen. Now the way I've set up this code, I started out with three variables outside of the main loop. So I've got my x and y so that I can control Bob with a joystick. And I've also set a variable A that I'm going to assign to Bob's sprite color. And what we're going to do is if there's a collision, that will increment so that Bob will flash. So inside the main loop, I'm setting the background color. I'm setting what I want the color of the player zero sprite and the player one sprite to be. And then I'm drawing my player zero and my player one sprites. Then again, what I'm doing is I am setting the positions of the player zero and the player one sprites. And then I've got my collision detection code in here. Now, again, the collision detection thing sits into an if then statement. So if there's a collision between two objects, then something will happen. So the way I've set this up is if there's a collision between player zero and player one, the two things that you want to monitor for a collision, you put them into brackets separated by a comma. Then in this case, A will equal A plus one. And you remember that A is the color of Bob's sprite. So that will increment the whole time by one and Bob will flash. Then we've got our joystick commands that we covered before, and that is pretty much the code to do all this. And if we run it, what we get is Bob here on screen with the little skull sprite beside him, and we can move Bob around the way we did before. But if they touch, Bob will start flashing. So really, we've got the bones of a game here. The only thing we're missing is that the characters can't shoot at each other. So we're going to build on this in the next episode and look at the missiles that are available to each sprite as well. And there's also a ball available as well that we can make bounce around the screen and be another kind of a, an enemy if we want it to be. So we're after covering quite a bit. We're getting closer to making this hedgehog octopus game. And that's kind of going on in the background as well. I'll have a little update on that game itself fairly soon. So until the next episode, everyone, take very good care of yourselves and we'll talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye.